Hi guys, Sunday night shenanigans about to commence. Chop chop girls, who's here? Say hi when you come on, tell me where you're from. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mara LaFay with Vintage Retail Therapy and I'm in San Diego, California, Fallbrook and it's raining here. We have had so much rain you guys. It's crazy, like I don't think we've seen this much rain in SoCal in a really, really long time. Hey Suzanne, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. So we're, are you guys, hey Rhonda, how are you honey? Good to see you. Hey Carol, thank you for the package. I received it. You're awesome. You're a doll. Mwah. Hey Patricia, how you girls doing? Hey Jude. Hey Jude. Hey Sharon. Okay, so are you guys wondering what color we decided? So I was looking, looking, looking. And by the way, I love when you guys give me suggestions because it really kind of makes me start thinking about it. Hi, Carol. So I love the idea of purple and I love the idea of navy. You guys had great ideas, uh, but I'm trying to keep it kind of somewhat neutral um, just for resale purposes. And then I started looking around the shop. So we've got a green, we have a white, we have a pink. Hey, Vanessa. Um, Hey, Deborah. Hey, Kimberly. So we have a lot of different colors. So I tried to choose something that was different that we didn't have, number one. And um, number two, something that kind of, when I started thinking about the plan, truth be told, I had no idea what we were going to do until like a couple of hours ago. And, you know, nothing really got me excited. So I asked my husband to put the jewelry cabinet in the truck and, and here we are. So I think, hey Mary, hey Vanessa, hi Brenda. So I finally decided to go with a color that is neutral but yet has a kick. And again, hey Miriam, hi Ramona. I started looking around the shop and started thinking what colors do we have, what colors do we need, and what do I have available to use? So if you guys remember, I wanna say about three weeks ago, hey Jackie, hey, D hey, how are you? Good to see you. Hey Dina. So we decided to use the leftover transfer from a few weeks ago and we're putting molds. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the sides. I painted it, I actually I primed it, which I shouldn't have done because I feel like I wasted my time and my product. I decided to go with black black one so i really didn't need the primer hi jill hey judy but anyway so the sides are primed i'm not sure what's happening on the sides again i just kind of we're flying by the seat of our pants again are you surprised so here she is i'm adding molds to the uh, top let me show you here let me move you guys down so there she is painted black you can see i primed the sides However, um, I didn't really need to, not realizing that we were gonna do black. I'm gonna do something on that side and I might add some texture cream. Who knows, we'll have to figure it out. By, ne by next Sunday, I'll know exactly what I'm doing. So anyway, but this is what we have for now. So I'm gonna add some molds around the top. It's got some really nice detail here. And this is a little different than the last two jewelry cabinets that I've done. I wanna say, um, this is my third jewelry cabinet. The others had legs and these do too, but these have little legs down here that I think, I think they're gonna be gold and they might even be gold foil. But again, who knows? Hey, Marsha. Hi, Bobby from Oregon. Okay, so we're gonna get started. So for the moles, I'm adding a little detail here and then you're gonna see what we're gonna add to the front. Hi, Debbie, and then we'll see how much time we have. Definitely this is gonna be a two-part um, makeover. So I'm using the Queen Bee mold for this one. This is one of the new molds. They're quite a bit larger for those of you who haven't seen the size, the difference in the size. Hey Sylvia, hey Jody, hi Robin. Look at the difference in the size from the old molds to the new molds. So we're using the new Queen Bee and come on, who doesn't love crowns and bees? It's fabulous. Plus it has these laurel leaves here that are really great. I love them. Hey Linda, hi Jody and Ruth, welcome. So I made a few ahead of time. I didn't pop them in the freezer because I just decided kind of, of course you know me at the last minute, I just decided to, um, to add them. So I just thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna make them and just kind of store them over here. So I have my glue ready. I'm actually gonna make one more. Um, just so you see how easy these are. Hi, Sandy. 
Okay, so again, we're doing the queen bee. I'm using my Das Clay. I'm waiting for um, the sisters, the IOD sisters, to come out with the new clay. It's supposed to be very similar to this consistency. So I'm anxious to try that. But for now, you know what? This has been the one that I really prefer. It just, it's the right consistency for me. It's not sticky. I'm able to get a good release out of my molds. Hey, Sherry. You did just, you know what? I saw that I got an order in, yay. Well, wait till you see what we're gonna do with it. So I always try to manipulate my clay very similar to the size that I'm putting in it. So since we're doing the laurel leaves, I'm kind of just making one really long rope. And then we're gonna work from there. So the new molds have micro rims on them. Um, and they seem to be a lot easier to use and a lot cleaner, especially as trying to get that flat edge so that it lays down on your furniture. Can you guys see my hands okay? Let me see if I can move my chair a little bit. I got a new camera stand, you guys. All right. You guys can see that now, yeah? So we're using gas. And we're just gonna whip out a couple of these really quick so you'll see how fast this goes. So I always start, when I'm making molds, I always start from one end to the other because then if there's any excess, you can just kind of push it off the side. Hey girl. I'm excited to be with you, Jane. In July, Jane and I are joining several other really talented artists. We're gonna be at Jazzin' Up the Junk in Crossville, Tennessee. So if you guys are in that area, you've gotta come. So apparently there's this thing called 127, which is the longest, it's the longest flea market, yeah? And um, I've heard of it before, I've never been. I've Actually, I've never been to Tennessee. So that'll be two firsts for me. So three days prior, there's an event called Jazzing Up the Junk, and if you haven't followed the Facebook page, go ahead and do so because you'll get a lot of updates and you'll get to see the projects. I have a feeling they're going to start posting the projects of the classes that's going to be happening there. So there's a lot of really, really talented and wonderful artists, so I'm really excited. So that's it, you guys. You're done. Now, I pretty much did that with my hand. A lot of people are taking little putty knives, and they're just kind of, and you can do this kind of at the end just to smooth it. You're just kind of taking it and doing that and getting a nice flat back. So you want the top of your molds to be as flat as possible because you want them to lay as flat as possible on your furniture, on your boards, or whatever it is that you're adhering it to. Because if they don't, if they don't lay flat, they're going to be all janky looking and it's not going to look, um, you want it to look like a seamless application. Does that make sense? You're not going to be, don't say that. Of course they're going to post drawers. I haven't even seen it. Have you finished it? Hi, Mona. Hey, Mary. All right, so boom, done. Look how easy that is, and look how gorgeous that leaf is, that laurel leaf. Janky. I always say janky. Does anybody else say janky? All right, so again, I've got this big rope, so I can have like a little assembly line here. So here's a great tip. If you need to make a lot of these to go around edging, like we're making now, you certainly can make them ahead of time. And once you get them done and you pop them out of your molds, pop them in the freezer and they will stay. And then it takes about maybe 15 minutes to defrost them. So I like to make all my molds ahead of time when I'm edging a big piece. Um, and then, so I do maybe one or two sessions sitting in front of the TV and I make a bunch of molds and I pop them in the freezer. And then when I'm ready to apply, I have them all ready for me. So once they defrost, they're just as pliable as if you took them out. Suzanne, your dad used to say that? Aw, I love that word, janky. It just says so much, doesn't it? Okay, so we're just gonna do two and then we're gonna glue these bad boys on and we're gonna move it along. I haven't decided if we're gonna put texture on the sides, if we're gonna put some stamp on the sides. 
I just realized what we're doing to the front. So it's going to take me a minute to... You guys, I'm a marinator. I have to marinate in pieces. Hey, Carrie. Thanks for joining us. You know, it's very hard for me. Once in a while, I can look at a piece of furniture and know exactly what I'm going to do to it. But more times than not, and maybe it's because... Girls, I have so many options up here. Like, how do you choose, be you know, between all this goodness going on, this back wall? How could you ever choose what to do? It's so hard. Suzanne says, do I know where my whatchamacallit is? Oh, that's funny. See, I say that too. Okay, so I've got, let's see, two, four, six, eight. You know what? I still have a little bit in this rope. Let's just do one more. Let's use this up. You're so welcome, Miriam. Well, honestly, it was meant to go to you because you're the one who saw it initially and said that you wanted that desk. So life is like that. Sometimes just things work out just the way they're supposed to. You see how fast this goes, you guys? Hey, Jody. Okay, again, I'm working from one end to the other. I'm using an air-dried clay. You can also use two-part resin. The resin is only pliable until it is hardened. Once it hardens, it is not pliable. Some people say put it in the microwave and you can re-soften it. Me personally, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that because that stuff is toxic and I don't think I'd be heating it up and sniffing it. I mean... Especially, you know, if you're an artist, girl, we've been sniffing paints and all kinds of solvents for years. We're probably crazy enough without, you know, reheating some resin. Or at least I am, that's for sure. It's just toxic. I actually stopped using E6000 for that purpose as well. Okay, so this will be our last one. Any questions? Pretty easy. All right. So I have a little bit left. I'm gonna put it back in my container. Always keep this in a covered container or in a plastic Ziploc bag. Some people actually put a um, moist paper towel in the bag. Honestly, I've never done that and it's been okay. I think as long as your bag is sealed, I think you are fine. All right, so let's get some glue. I've got some glue here and we're using tight bond quick and thick. I like it because it pretty much says what it's going to do. It's quick, it's thick, and it sets up really fast. I think I just answered that question. The quite bond, uh, tight bond quick and thick is what I'm using. Let me show you. And it actually adheres to wood, pottery, ceramic, stone, glass, fabrics, leather and most craft type materials. So it's kind of a good all purpose glue. But you always wanna make sure when you're adhering your molds that it's a surface appropriate glue. So if you need this to adhere to metal, see this one doesn't say metal, so you might wanna look for one if you're gluing molds on metal to a metal, uh, surf again, surface appropri appropriate. Vanessa says, the patina jacked her up today. I called it, oh no, did it not go as planned? You know what? If you have any questions about it, message me later. And if I can help you kind of troubleshoot some stuff, I'd be more than happy to, okay? Okay, so let's move it. Let's move it along. All right, can you guys see this? Let me move this over. Okay, good. There we are. So I'm actually just going to apply it with my finger. See, this is already cutting to set up. And we're gonna stick it on there. Um, optimum would be to lay this down. It'd just be hard for me to work on the floor and I don't really wanna pick it up on the table. But if you can apply your molds while your furniture piece is laying down, this way they're not shifting or moving too much. However, you don't always have the option to do that. If you're doing a ceiling or an armoire or cabinets, you might not be able to do that. So just take some blue painter's tape. All right. 
I think this is going to look really cute here. And wait till you see. I think I need to move it over just a little bit more. Let me see if I can line this up a little more. So the nature of air-dried clay is that it shrinks. So just know that going in. And if you're doing any time of continuous trim, I would squish your clay pieces kind of together so that as it dries and shrinks, there's not so much gap. So once we, um, once this dries, I'm going to show you next week, I'll show you a tip just to kind of fill in the gaps. All right, so we're just gonna keep moving. And I think the other one, I'm gonna put facing in the other direction. I might need some more glue. Let's see, any questions on molds? So if you're using two-part resin, it's really easy, you guys. Um, you just, basically, you mix the two parts. Once you mix them together, there's a kind of a short window. So don't think you can mix up a bunch of them unless you're really prepared with all your molds. What do you think, you guys like that? I think it's gonna look great. And we have a question. Bobby says, off the subject, what pens did I prefer for the paintable transfers? That's actually a really good question. I think I like the India inks better. However, they're quite pricey. So I think for uh, the average person who doesn't um, necessarily want to get a lot of use out of them, maybe it, you just craft for your own personal use, you don't resell things, so you're not gonna use them often. I think my number two would be the um, Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. I really liked those a lot, a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Of. Hey, Angela. Girl, we were just talking about you. I was telling them about the jazzing up the junk. So you've got to follow the jazzing up the junk page. Angela, if you want to put that link in there for the jazzing up the junk page, that would be awesome. Okay, so here I have an option. So do I go this way or do I go this way? Let's see. Either way, I think I'm just going to go this way. Nah, I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going this way. So you can tell with this quite bond, uh, tight bond, quick and thick, it really does set up pretty fast. Because if this were another glue, it they might start sliding. So that's another reason I really like that glue. Um, okay, so we have a question. Do we paint the molds once placed before they are completely set? You can paint them. The only thing is, is if they're not completely dry and you want to paint them, just go very lightly because your brush could kind of smash the shape. So that would be the only thing. Other than that, I think you could absolutely paint them ahead of time. I tried to paint some and then freeze them. It didn't work so good because what happened was I didn't give them a chance to dry so when I took them out and started handling them, I had paint all over my fingers. It was just one of those days, you know, I was tired. And you know, when you're tired, sometimes you don't think straight. All right, so we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep moving. Actually, I'm gonna go on this side so you can see. Another reason why I like clay, because it has a lot more open time. Do you see how flexible that is? I totally just went around that corner. Kimberly says she did molds the other day and it was easy and she did a patina. You think you did it wrong? What did you do? So typically with patina, and I'm not sure, there's a lot of different brands out there. Um, I use Dixie Belle products, so I use the Dixie Belle patina line, and I feel it's one of the easiest patinas I've ever done. Um, so basically, you get to choose a paint, and they have three different colors. They have a copper, they have an iron, and they have a, um, gosh, there's one more, and I can't think of the name of it. But So you paint one coat of your patina paint, and then you let it dry, and then your second coat is where you apply your spray because there's always it's typically a two-part process so you apply your paint and then there's um there's a reaction that happens once you hit it while it's wet on the second coat and i really the 
It varies based on the colors that you choose. There's typically a green spray and a blue spray. So based on whatever color you choose will determine what patina. Some patina products give you like a rust finish. I wanna make sure you guys can see that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, it is bronze. So some give you a rust finish, some give you um, like a whitish patina finish and some are more blue. And I, you know what, I kinda like to mix the green and the blue spray together just cause I can. But, um, so I would say, do a sample board. When I first got my patina products, I just took like an old board and I just painted all three colors and I sprayed it with all three sprays and I just kind of waited and then I decided which one I liked depending on the product. Project, Bobby's asking, did I adopt the dog? Oh, you guys, it was so sad. So we went yesterday. I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute. We went yesterday, we packed up all the dogs. You know, the weather hasn't been all that great. I'm gonna show you here what we're doing because, and then I'll finish my story. Okay. So I'm just cutting this off right about here. And I might be able to use this on the other side, I don't know. And again, I'm just gonna kind of push it in because there's gonna be a gap. The nature of air dry clay is as it dries, it shrinks and it cracks a little bit. I love the cracking personally. I think it really adds to that aged look. But next week I'll show you what to do if you have big gaps. Invariably, we're gonna have some gaps in here and then I'll show you how to correct that. Okay, so there's our edges. Let's just do the other side really quick because I've already got the molds made up ahead of time. Again, you certainly can put these in the freezer and make up all your molds at once. Sometimes I sit in front of the TV and while my husband's watching something, I'm just making molds. I stick them on a flat surface and I just, I put them in the, in the freezer. Um, sometimes if I'm not going to be working with them right away and I need the space in the free in the freezer, I'll put them in like a plastic tub. And once they're frozen, you can kind of stack them. Man, I might have even made too many, but let's see. So the new transfers, what they're recommending is that you sandwich them between two layers of top coat. Used to be where you just put them right over chalk paint, um, but I have to say it's a lot easier to release when it's going on top of your finish. And I have like one and a half left. I think I'm just gonna pop in my freezer. And then I'll just use them on my next project. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Okay, so we have just this one little section left. And then we're gonna get to the front because that's where all the good stuff is happening. Again, I'm just gonna cut this off right here. right there. My hands are so gunky. Let me just wipe them off really quick. So this has a little bit of a curve and I'm just gently following the curve along this piece. Okay, so I like for my transfers, again, I'm a Dixie Bell girl, so I'm using the flat out flat. So you don't want to use the, um, hang on, let me move this up just a little bit. This is not moving. You don't want to use the gator hide because the gator hide is a little too strong. It's a waterproof sealer. It doesn't really marry well with the transfers. So I prefer the flat out flat, but there's a lot of compatible transfers. If you have a certain paint brand, I would say talk to your paint stockist and they should know. All right, let's turn this girl around and I am gonna wash my hands because I've got it all sticky with glue. 
Okay, so here we are, Queen Bee, Laurel Leaf Mold on the top. Let me get some wipes and clean my hands. And then you'll see what we're gonna do on the top and the front. It's gonna be really fun. I'm kind of feeling gold for the feet. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so sorry. My phone totally fell off the stand. Let me see if I can put you back up here. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Flat out flat is Dixie Belle. Let me move this up. Let's do this. Let's do this. Sorry, you guys. We're having technical difficulties. Let me tighten this. I'm still trying to figure out how to do my camera. All right, we're going to go on the side. We're going to go this way. And then go this way. All right, so I'm a little, a little lower. Let's clean this up. And I think I need to go grab a stick. So two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I uh, did the white dresser project, which by the way, I am thrilled. Um, I Orchid Design put it on their Instagram page, and I was so honored that they did that. And there's gonna be a blog, it's gonna be on their blog post. So I tell you what, I was just, I was seriously doing the happy dance, like I really was. Where's the hubby? <laughs> he quit on me. No, I'm just kidding. He's actually here. He was here um, pricing paint today. So I just gotta get some of this glue off my hands, girls. Hey, Laura. Yes, it was really exciting, really exciting. So all that to say, the transfers, because remember we mashed two transfers together. We married the Midnight Garden with the um, Botanist Journal, I think it was. And we used it on that piece and I had left over. So that's the great thing about, um, Bobby says that was stunning, thank you so much. That's the great thing about the transfers is that you can cut them up and use whatever as much or as little as you want. You can layer them, they're great for layering. And it's not like um, it's not like vinyl. A lot of people say, oh, I can just do like a vinyl cutout. It's not like vinyl because there's no, there's like you can't feel it. It really has a hand painted feel. All right, I think the glue is off enough where I really want to pick it off, but ain't nobody got time for that right now. We gotta get this off. Because what's gonna happen is because I'm doing black, I don't wanna get it, uh, you know how black sometimes every little speck shadows onto your paint? So I painted this in, um, actually I did a primer, which I didn't need to do because then I realized I was doing black, which is okay. But I painted in in about a coat and a half, maybe two coats of Dixie Bill Caviar. I just don't want to touch it and see and there's some sandy parts there okay back to the molds real quick as this dries you want to be mindful and just make sure a it's not slipping down your furniture piece and two just kind of gently press it down sometimes it likes to pull away I think it's gonna be really pretty really pretty and I think like I said it's gonna have some gold in there so I just need to grab a stick really quick. Give me two shakes. Okay. So inside every transfer comes these little plastic sticks. So we're using part of the Midnight Garden that we didn't use on our last project. Wait till you see, it's gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that gonna be great on that black? I am so excited. So, again, I don't know what we're gonna do to the sides. I won't know, I don't know when I'll know, but you guys will see it here next Sunday when I figure it out. There's our old camera guy. Not old as an old guy. Say hi, You can. nobody can see you. Hi. 
Can you close that drawer for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. You're so sweet. Thank you, Jody. All right, so I might have to get down on the floor for this one. Uh-oh, here we go. Going down. And let's see if there's any blue tape around. Okay, you guys. So, oh my gosh, that is going to look so gorgeous. So you don't want to peel it away from the backing unless it's come, you're ready to use it. And I want to say it's going to go right about there. And that is going to be so stunning. So once you take it off the backing, it has a very, very slight tack to it. Gwen's asking a question. Do the molds curl in the freezer? I made a few and tried to dry them on a cookie sheet, but the tails on the Flourish mold curled up. Gwen, did you freeze them while they were still, like just when you took them out of the mold? Because once they defrost, they should be super pliable again. So I'm not, I'm not sure, but because every time I've frozen my molds, they've been just as, once they defrost, they're just as if I just made them. Okay, so again, it has a little bit of tack. You know, you, there's some play time in there, so it is repositionable to a certain point. Once you get it on there and you are you're start rubbing, you really don't want to move it. Can you guys see that okay? Let me see if I can go down. All right. I had some painter's tape here. Let me see. Hey, Rich. Yeah. Can you see if there's some painter's tape on the table? Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. It's right here. I set my mold on top of it. I usually try to be prepared with everything I think I need, but you know, there's always that one thing. So I'm just gonna put just a little bit of tape at the top, just to kind of hold it in place. This way I don't have to worry about holding it. Again, ideal conditions would be to lay this down and do it. Okay, Gwen says she didn't freeze them. Okay, yes, definitely put them in the freezer. Robin, this is the Midnight Garden transfer, and it's actually the piece that's left over from our project from about three weeks ago. And I guess I could lay this down, truth be told. I just don't want to move, get the moles moved around too much. And I'm probably going to need, maybe my assistant can get that for me, an X-Acto knife. Where's that? Um, it should be in the drawer, in the little cup there by the register. X-Acto knife or mm -hmm. a box cutter? Box cutter. Okay, guys. This is all you need, right here. Go to town. So I usually start rubbing my transfer on there. might start cutting away once it starts getting adhered I can go back in can you guys see and just cut it here
hard to see because it's color. I'm just kind of feeling to see where my drawer ends. Once it gets down here, there's such a saturation of color in these transfers. They're absolutely gorgeous. And again, they it's not like a vinyl. They truly have a hand-painted feel. You guys, if you've not used one, you won't believe how easy they are. It literally is as easy as just pushing a stick. So if you've never tried a transfer, let me know in the comments if you've never tried one. If you have tried them, what's your favorite one? What's been your favorite one so far? I'm always curious. And it's funny because sometimes the stockist, when we have to order stuff, when it first comes out, we don't know what's gonna be everybody's favorite. So it's always, um, it's always interesting to see which ones take off. I think in this last release, the summer release, I think it was the wildflowers that, man, you couldn't keep that in stock. Okay, so now I need to decide if I'm gonna go all the way to the edges or if I'm gonna stop it. Um, there is, this does open up, and I think I am gonna go all the way to the edges. I think I'm just going to cut it though. I'm going to put just a little bit of tape over here and I'm sorry if I'm missing uh, okay Brenda's asking anything floral yes Brenda there uh, there's so much floral if you like florals the botanist journal is gorgeous this one is gorgeous they have the paintable ones there was a lot a lot of florals in this one Carol you've never tried to transfer I tell you what it is so easy and I gotta say it's slightly addicting. Okay, maybe more than slightly. Definitely addicting. All right, so I'm just going to cut where the ed my edges are here. Just so that I can make sure I curve around. But you notice I didn't cut it until I got it up here. Some people cut and then apply, move the camera. You know what? I think I'm gonna move you guys down a little bit. Let's try moving you down. And here I am again on the floor. Let's see. Is that better? Is that better? You guys give me a thumbs up if that's better. Can you see? I moved you down. Okay, good. So I like to peel back just a little bit and see if it's adhering. Once it is, I just start moving right along the transfer. And I think it's going to be gorgeous with this. Actually, let me cut it right in here, too. This is the edge of where the drawer is. If you need to cut these to fit a project, what's nice is that they do have grid lines on them. Yeah, I think it's right there. All right. This is it here. Let's see. So if you find you peel back and it's still not, like here it's transferred, here it isn't, just go back over it. It's no big whoop. There you go. Sometimes you get a bubble in there and you can kind of ride the bubble. So this transfer has a lot of color in it and it's got a little bit that's not colored. If I wanted to, I could paint that in and I might decide to do that. Okay, hey Carrie, thanks for joining us. Gwen, this is Dixie Belle's Caviar is our base color and it's a black. 
All right, and I really do like the black on black. I might leave it, I might paint it in. I won't know, but we'll do it next week. We'll finish this next week. Let's see how much we can get done now. At least get this transfer on there. And then we'll check our molds and see how they're doing. All right, let me cut this right here too. Okay, isn't the black on black gorgeous? Carrie says she just ordered this one. It's beautiful, it really is beautiful. I'm glad I had this little piece left over because it fits this spot just perfect. You know, sometimes I'm afraid to cut transfers up because I think, oh my gosh, is it gonna be wasted? But honestly, none of this will ever get wasted because there's always something you can put it on. And the fact that you can kind of mix and match, it's win-win. And they're gorgeous, so it's win-win-win. Okay, that second one is almost done. This is cutting a lot of little pieces. Rich, are you watching our live? No. Oh, okay. I was going to say if I'm missing any questions. Let me just cut this little piece here so that I can remove this. Dramatic, right? Save the drama for your jewelry chest. I usually say save the drama for your llama. Oh my goodness. Get the tissues, girls. I'm gonna be drooling in a second. Oh, good grief. Look how gorgeous that is. Woo! Yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Why are they recommending top coat before and after transfers? You know what? That's a really good question. I'm, you know, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. I just know that it's better adhesion. And I think there's something about the transfers. They're a little bit different than the older ones were. Now they will still work because I've actually, before I knew that, I actually applied one to an unsealed surface and it worked fine. However, I had to rub a little bit harder and it took me a little bit longer. So that's just a recommendation. Of course, you know, we're artists, so we kind of do what we do. And I am gonna put this here on the sides. Might as well. Just gonna hold it because it's going on a curved surface here, so. pieces off because they're kind of starting to get in my way now. Loving this. I 
I'll tell you what, I thought and I thought and I thought about what color. And when I saw black, and then I had this, a little of this left over, it was like, you know, when you get that happy feeling in your stomach. And that's my thing. It's like, I don't want to do anything just to do it. If it doesn't give me that happy feeling, it ain't happening. It ain't going down. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that gorgeous? Marcia says there were issues with transfer pulling off the paint, so sealing helped that issue. There you go. I'll go with that one. All right, let's keep going. So once you get this applied, you just kind of want to burnish it in either with your hand or with like a soft cloth, just to kind of make sure that it really lays down. You guys, I'm really loving this so, so much. So I'm so excited to share. We are close, 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 close to 5,000 followers. We're not quite there, but we're, we're closer than we've ever been. So thank you for sharing my videos. Thank you to you who recommend our page to your friends. And we're going to have a big party when we get to 5,000. Oh we're going to do... <laughs> My husband says, oh boy, we're going to do some giveaways. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. I want to say we're at about 4,500 right now. So if you know somebody that would enjoy watching these videos, please share it. Okay. How gorgeous is that? Am I missing any questions? Let's see. I don't know, girls. I might have to keep this one. Okay, so who else paints furniture pieces and wishes you can keep them for yourself? Anybody else out there? I don't know, something about you work on these pieces and like you get emotionally attached to them. My mom is an artist. She Well, she was an artist before um, she has dementia now. So she unfortunately, she doesn't paint anymore. But her room is filled filled with all her paintings and she she very rarely sold them I want to say almost never unless it was a specific piece that she was making for you she they were like her children she was so emotionally attached to these things um, but it'll be really nice because we'll have them forever and actually she's painted me a few things uh, for my wedding anniversary she painted us a picture uh, she used to paint in oils and then they found out how toxic it was. So she started painting in acrylics. But truth be told, she didn't start painting until she was in her 50s. So. A little mama trivia for you. So I can't see your comments, guys. If I miss anything, I'll go back and answer. Let me just peek real quick. Do I ever name my painted pieces? Every single time. They always have names. They, oh, do you name your pieces too? Mine always have names. Oh 
almost done. Am I missing any questions? Can you seal with general finishes? Water-based top, top coat, Jelena is asking. Absolutely. Hey, Kathy, thanks for joining us. You can absolutely seal with that. Dixie Bell is another great sealer. So we're almost done with this side. We're just gonna go do those other little corner pieces. We'll check on our molds on the top. And if you guys wanna shoot me some ideas for the sides, we're definitely gonna glam this baby up though. I'm thinking she needs to have some gold accents, maybe even some gold feet. Some gilding cream on these molds would be kind of fun. And I promise, since you guys voted, so many of you voted for purple. I will do, I have two smaller jewelry boxes, and I promise you I will do one in purple. I just think for a larger piece, I think purples are great for accent pieces, but for resale, I think as neutral as possible. Um, now, neutral doesn't have to be boring. Okay, amaze balls, huh? Lisa says, I thought GF was gluten-free. Oh, that's funny. General finishes. <laughs> How are you, Lisa? It's good to see you here. Hey, Mary Ann, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Okay, this piece I think is about ready to come off. Let's see. Let's take this blue tape off here. Again, if it's not coming up, just stick it back down and push. Push a little harder. Love it. I like how it kind of went off the edges a little bit. Can you see how it's kind of going off? And this piece actually, oh, this is a door that opens up. Not now because I took the pull off of it and I can't, but you can see right here is the seam. Let's just do the other side really quick. And I need to decide, I'm probably gonna cut this here because I don't know what I'm doing with this side yet. I haven't decided. So I've got this little extra flap right here. Can you see this here? That Now if this were painted and if I knew what was going on here, I probably would wrap that around. However, and I still might, but I've got to finish that side first. My leg is totally cramped. Hang on, let me move my leg. So I've got to finish that side first before I decide. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to be wise, which I'm not always sometimes, and I'm just gonna cut this maybe right here. And again, it's got a grid. And then I'm gonna save this piece and I might wrap it around once I get that side done. So I'm just gonna save it and put it right back on the white backing that I took it off. And I'm gonna use that somewhere. Now this is okay here, even though it's wrapped around the corner because it's already painted my base coat, which is coal, uh, is, um, see I have it right here Dixie Bell caviar that's our base coat so this has little indents in these sides so I'm just actually just taking the edge of my stick so it doesn't necessarily have to be a completely flat surface for your transfers to adhere. Sometimes you just kind of have to go a little slower around the curves, but it's totally doable, you guys. Now I'm gonna post a picture. My friend actually came into the shop and she redid these two little um, 
like coffee table, not even coffee tables. They are like tray tables. And she put some transfers on them and you gotta see how gorgeous they are. And it was her first time using transfers. So I'll post her picture tomorrow of her little tray tables. You guys, I'm loving this on here, like more than I even thought I would. It'll be hard to let it sit there until next Sunday. They'll give me a couple of days though to kind of figure out what's gonna happen on the sides. I think the feet are definitely gonna be gold. And I don't think I'm gonna do gold paint. I think we're gonna do foil on the feet. I'm kind of thinking, go big or go home, right? Kind of rattling a little bit I'm sorry guys let me see if i'm missing any question angela just invited her friend oh thank you so much angela i so appreciate that you guys it helps so much when you share our videos or when you invite your friends all right Woohoo! yeah baby loving it Hey, there we go. There we go, Kokomo. She is done and ready for a date. Look at that. Okay, can you guys see that? How great that is? Thank you for sharing, Brenda. Carol says, yes, foil. Gwen's asking, is black a good seller? You know what? I think black is, is a pretty good seller. I think it's a neutral. I think it's a great neutral. And honestly, I think... I personally think there should be a little bit of black in every room. But then again, I wear mostly black, and I love black, black and white especially. But I think I think every room can use a touch of black, especially a piece like this because it's not a big piece. It's not um not that it couldn't it couldn't work on a bigger piece, but I just feel like um it's just enough. And and again, it, it it's neutral. Thank you so much for your shares and those colors do pop. Look at that, how gorgeous that is. It's gonna be gorgeous. So the knobs, um, I'm not sure if we're gonna change them. I really don't wanna take away from this, this pattern because it's absolutely amazeballs. Um, so I think we're just gonna keep them gold. We'll keep them small. I absolutely have it in stock, Miriam. If you guys can see, I'll pull you up so you can see my crazy IOD wall. I can't, I'm having trouble with my camera. Hang on, let's see if I can move this up this way. Okay. Can you see all the way or, all the way up there? I've got IOD everywhere. Everywhere. Let me move you back down. So you can find all the products on the website, www.vintageretailtherapy.com. And if there's something that you don't see that you're looking for, it's telling me to rotate my phone. Let's see, there we go. If there's something that you don't see that you're looking for, send me a message. I'd be more than happy to help you. So a lot of times people have um, a tricky time navigating the website. So if you're on a cell phone, there's three bars at the top right hand side. If you push those dark bars, a drop down menu comes down. If you press the plus sign next to the word shop, everything is categorized. So it's under molds, transfers, um, there's APS products on there, there's foil, there's paint, um, there's all kinds of stuff. And Vanessa says she loves IOD. Oh, I'm sorry, this Valencia. Me too, girl. I'm seriously addicted. There is there isn't hardly anything that I can't think about putting a mold on or a transfer or a stamp. But enough about me. I'm sideways. Okay, let me go this way. There we go. Is that better? I hope I didn't tweak your neck. Okay, there we go. So there's our piece. 
Okay, guys, is that better? All right, let me see if I can get up. Give me a minute. I'll try not to grunt as I'm getting off this floor. Man, getting old ain't for sissies, that's for sure. Okay. All right. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, pop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to go back in and answer them for you. So again, let me see if I can pull you guys in closer. This is the queen bee mold. We use the laurel leaf that's in the queen bee mold. So guess what's happening here? Something is going over this seam. I haven't decided what. It's either gonna be a crown or a bee, or let's see, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. But definitely where these ends meet right here, there's gonna be something nice and big and chunky there. Anyway, you guys, next week we'll finish this out. Again, who knows what we're going to do to the sides. I'm not sure, but I'll know by Sunday at 5 o'clock. Thank you for your shares to you guys that order from me, even the ones like in different states. I so appreciate it. It really just kind of um, keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. It gives me ideas. I love when you guys shoot ideas to me. And thank you so much for supporting my small business. I can't tell you how appreciated it is. She, uh, Serafina says she just got that mold today. The laurel leaf is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. God bless you guys. Have a fabulous week. And I'll see you right back here Sunday night, live at 5. Ciao. Bye-bye. This is not.